Age old debate this morning in the studio. Dunkaroos or Gushers as a supreme soccer snack? Dunkaroos. I'm gonna go with that this morning. Vanilla cookies with rainbow chip frosting. Listen, Radio Row and stuff doesn't start till next week, yet somehow, we somehow landed Gronk. Weddle, Mitchell Schwartz, former chief, of course, to break down the trenches here, and Shams, NBA insider. What? Is this Radio Row right now? Let's go. These are delicious. Oh my God, Dunkaroos are so good. Um, welcome in to our show here. Do we have the treat? Is that not what we were doing out of the break? I'm so confused about what we're uh, doing here on Up and Adams today. Gronk tweet. There it is. Tommy, since I already wrote you a long retirement message last year, this time I shall say, welcome to the two-time retire club. Very funny. I love this post from Gronk, and he joins us now. Our fan duel friend who's been absolutely everywhere. Gronk, du moi, this like gossip website that catches celebrity, is catching you wearing some crazy green suit in the middle of Manhattan and ordering something from some store. Did you even know that happened? No, I didn't even know that happened, but I'm just wondering where my introduction was today. Usually you're showing my highlights, scoring touchdowns, ground spiking. I, I got no highlights for them today on my introduction. I'm very sad right now. It's because you've never come in at the top of the show. So really, this is the better place to be. Like, you are the star of the top of the show. Um, uh, they're actually right, saying we can roll it. it. Gronk says roll it. Roll it! All right, now, Joining we're, us now. now we're talking, now I'm excited, and now we can we can do this little interview thing today. I'm ready to go now. Let's go. Joining us now, four-time Super Bowl champ and FanDuel family member, Rob Gronkowski! Ooh, 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 Thank you. Ooh. Thank you, folks. Uh, thank you, folks, for hanging out with us today for a little bit. Uh, obviously, huge news. Loved your post on Tom Brady. I loved his self-awareness about how it's a second time, so he's not expecting, um, you know, the the uh, Derek Jeter, Mariano Rivera treatment. But how are you feeling about this when it finally happened? Was it a little emotional, or were, did you know for a long time already? No, I didn't know at all. You know, I woke up yesterday morning about... 10 a.m. and noticed that he retired about 90 minutes prior because uh, the first time I checked some news to that uh, yesterday morning, it was just all over the place. And uh, Tom's just the greatest player of all times. There's no doubt about that. He, um, what's so great about, you know, his legacy is that he started from the very bottom and he worked his way up to the very, very top to be the greatest player of all time. Nothing was given to him. Everything was earned. Literally every single thing, every honor, every touchdown, um, every award, every Super Bowl, he earned everything that he got. And that's just amazing to see. Uh, that's just inspiration for the youth, inspiration for every player that he played with, uh, his teammates, his family. Um, he just got to the top, just putting in the hard work every single day. And uh, he definitely deserves the retirement. Uh, he deserves every accolade that he gets. And uh, he's just going to do great off the field, just as great off the field as he did on the field. What is he going to do now, Gronk, do you think? All right. Well, you know, he's definitely retired now. I would definitely say so. Um, no, no doubt about that. I don't think he's going to retire a second time and uh, and come back before this year. I, I don't see that happening uh, just, you know, just because he's been in this situation now. And uh, But he's got a lot of things on his plate. He's done a great job to set – himself up after football. I mean, he has that podcast that he's doing, the Let's Go podcast uh, that's on Sirius XM. He has the Brady brand uh, with mm -hmm. the clothing line that he has that has been just doing just absolutely just amazing. I, I pose in the underwear for him. I have the shorts, the shirts and everything. Uh, he did a great job just having, you know, just unbelievable material, just making it very comfortable just to wear his clothes all around, work out in, whatever it was. Sometimes I wear, wear his stuff out to dinner. That's how comfortable it is. Um, he's got the Fox gig uh, to be a commentator. You know, I'm going to be an analyst. He's going to be a commentator. Um, I definitely believe that fits him very well. Just his knowledge of the game is just second to none. Uh, no one's ever really, you know, 
heard him speak of the game, heard him speak of like how he sees the game. Uh, so that's going to be very cool, just him up in the booth to put his perspective out there. I mean, I was a part of it uh, throughout my whole mm -hmm. career and just the way we go in the meetings. I mean, sometimes if, if I miss a practice that week or, you know, I forgot to pay attention, you know, I was, I was drooling off, not paying attention to the film room. I can just meet up with him 30 minutes prior, uh, you know, the day before a game, and he can break down the opposing defenders that were playing that week in a heartbeat. He knows their weaknesses. He knows their strengths just like that. So that's what makes him so great as well as a player is that he just knows the game mentally and physically like no one else. And that's why he was so great. And that's why he played for such a long time. It's really well said, Gronk. Are there any, I mean, you're like the Brady clothes spokesperson. By the way, they're available in Dick's Sporting Goods, and I've got a partnership with them, so I love seeing that you can get Brady as easily in at pretty much so many locations across the country at Dick's Sporting Goods. We love Tom Brady. We love his clothes. Do you have any lying in those heaps of wardrobe behind you? Where where are you, Rob? All right, so I'm in my office slash wardrobe room right now. It's Camille's wardrobe room. She actually just had her stylist over. And uh, once in a while, I'm lucky enough to be able to put my suit on the rack right here if I have room yeah. to fit. So that's where I am. I actually, I don't have any Brady gear in here right now, but I do have a nice, the nice long sleeve sweatshirt that's in my suitcase. I put it on, you know, when I go to step outside out in the cold up here in the, in the yeah. north. Yeah. Shout out to Brady, shout out to Camille, shout out to Danny and Alex, who's Styler, who I love and adore and think they're amazing. So it's a whole family affair here with our friend Rob Gronkowski. I'll ask you this. I was at the uh, the AD for Brady premiere. Thought I'd see you. You're super busy and getting ready for next week with FanDuel and the Kick of Destiny. Uh, acting could very much be in Tom's future. I was so, I don't know if you've seen the movie all the way through. At the end, with him and Lily Tomlin, and then you're, of course, there with Jane Fonda, which we'll get to, like, Brady was kind of locked in. Like, I could see a little acting moment for him. Yes, definitely. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that was his first time in, like, a, in a movie setting. I, I don't recall him really being in any other movies. Ted, I mean, I Ted remember too. he was in... Hey, what, what was that? What movie was it? Oh, Ted 2. Yeah, but that was very, very quick, like, a very quick scene. He was also in Entourage, yeah, you know, in the shows uh, when I was growing up in high school, I remember seeing him in Entourage. It wasn't the movie, though. It was the shows. He did a great job there. But that was his really first time, you know, just kind of – He, I'm pretty sure he produced the movie as well. He was part of it, of the producing team, and also being in the movie. I mean, just put it this way. If he puts, you know, 20% – of what he did into football, but what he does, but he takes 20% of that and puts it into whatever he does off the field. If it's acting, if it's being in the booth, uh, commentating, he's going to be more successful than anyone else out there. Just, just put it that way just in terms of perspective of how he prepared in football and going into his afterlife after football. So if just 20% of effort he puts in off the yeah. field than what he did the football, he's going to be that successful still. Just, just I've seen it with my own eyes, just how hard he works. So whatever he does, you know, he has magic. It's going to turn gold. And uh, he just does a great job. I mean, he works hard at whatever he's going to do. He's not going to, you know, half cake something like, okay, yeah, I'm going to show up and then just do a, you know, a subpar performance. He loves showing up, loves competing at whatever he does. If it's on the field, off the field, if it's in sports or if it's, you know, acting. Uh, whatever it is, the guy's ready to go and just wants to be at the top. And I, you got to respect that, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you guys just did this movie together. You told me before I saw it here on the show that it was so fun to hang out with him and Adeline and Dola and all those guys, and it was a great moment. You had so many moments with Tom in your career, on the field or off the field. So which is the scene in the Gronk Brady movie that you would submit that would give you the Oscar? Like, what is the one memory of your career with him? As you're a little bit nostalgic this morning, still I can tell about playing with Tom. Like, what's the scene that really wins, that takes the gold? Oh, all right. Like, so you're talking about just one time, you know, throughout yeah. our, our, throughout the decade we played together. What, what would get us the Oscar? Oh, man, that's a tough just your question. Just favorite, your favorite moment. Just your favorite, like the thing that, like, yes you would frame a picture of this moment with Tom Brady. Yes, okay. Okay, I actually do have it framed. I'm just gonna put it that way. 
Uh, yes, for sure. I mean, the Super Bowl games and all that, those those were unbelievable. Those will always go down in history. But the one moment that him and I had together, it was versus the Indianapolis Colts. I think it was um, in 2016 or 2017 season. And uh, he it was the fourth quarter, and he threw me an out route. And uh, mm. I, I turned it up. I, I, I planted my foot, and I, I did a 360, and I turned it up the field, made a couple guys miss. Julian Edelman absolutely decked the safety for me uh, to get me into the end zone, to free me up totally. And I jumped up in the air, flipped into the end zone. And then, Tom, I'm just celebrating the end zone. Then all of a sudden, someone jumps on my back. Tom ran full speed across the whole field and just jumped up in the air high as he could to celebrate with me. And he jumped on my back and he went for a piggyback ride. And I didn't even know who it was. Like I was just at that moment, I was just so excited. You kind of black out on big plays, on big play moments. So I kind of blacked out. And then later on the next day, there's this picture of Tom on my shoulder with, with his head like right here next to me going for a piggyback ride. And uh, I was like, dude, Tom, that was you that jumped on my back? Like, just because in that moment, <laughs> there's so much going on. And it was just so cool to see that picture. It was my favorite picture of all time that we have together. I actually posted on my Instagram yesterday. The uh, first picture is us as Buccaneers, and the second picture is when we were on the Patriots. And that was the moment when he jumped on my back. Oh, and it's looking. just a picture. It's a picture-perfect um, <laughs> moment for sure. And that's going to be framed up at my house one day. And I'm going to have them. That's the picture. Obviously, I'm going to have a, you know, a decoration of, yeah. of, of players, of jerseys and everything. But that's the picture I'm going to have Tom sign Go personally ahead, Ron. to me with a note. Yep, this is the play. And then we're going to watch Tom after. <laughs> yeah, oh, you see Julian's block right there? Big time block. Jump over the guys. Flip into the end zone. Land on top of my head. Get back up. Ground spike it, baby, and then I start flexing. And then all of a sudden I'm flexing now. You, you see him jump up on my back? Yeah. That's a picture perfect moment right there. Tom jumping on my back right there. So that was that was just, I think, was our coolest moment, like that was caught on camera. I mean, we have so many. This one just popped up in my head at the moment. And uh, just to see him so excited that I made a play. Look at that block by Julian, though. You got to respect that, man. Julian, Julian's a dog. Great block by him, but just so many great memories. Like, it was hard to even, you know, pick that one, to pick that one out of all of them because there's so many, I mean, throughout, you know, the whole 11 yeah. years that we played together. But that was a great moment right there, a great time. But uh, another one, you know, and then all the Super Bowls as well. You know that. Then, then the four, then the four. And then there's the, the derbies, I thought, might be a story that you might <laughs> with him oh, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. All- the Kentucky derbies. Maybe he'll be ready to go again this year at the Kentucky derbies. I mean... The last time we went was after the Super Bowl uh, versus Seattle. We all went, you know. It's kind of like another reunion, you know, for all of us that we all pl- when we all play together. Julian Julian went to the Derby. Amendola went to the Derby. I went to the Derby, and then we're at 80 for Brady. We got Julian there, Amendola, myself. So we just love getting the band back together. So there could be another possible reunion this year at the Derby. I know Tom loves to go. Yeah, uh, he loves you know checking out the horse. Horse racing, he's he's really into that stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's entertaining. I mean, I think he's into it because he's been to the Derby a couple times. But, um, you know, whenever we can get the band back together, we always definitely try to. It's always a great time and great memories. Yeah, I love that. And who knows, maybe they'll pop up in Arizona where you will be the star. Maybe they'll cheer you on since you guys like these little reunions between all of you. 10 days away, Gronk. We've got 10 days until the kick of destiny. We've, listen, we've seen motivation play large. I had Darius Butler talking about how Belichick used to, you know, feed you guys motivational things. People were saying that you can't do it, whatever. We've got the mayor of Cincinnati telling Kelsey he can't do it. Kelsey calling the mayor a jabroni, all of this burrow head nonsense. Who's telling you that you can't make this kick? What's your motivation? You know, no one told me that I can't make the kick. Everyone's supporting myself. Everyone's supporting me. And uh, wherever wherever I'm going, people are yelling at me. I was leaving the restaurant yesterday. Two people yelled at me while they're sitting down. Gronk, you're going to make that kick. (laughs) So uh, everyone's motivating me. There's no one that came up to me like, Gronk, you're going to miss that kick. It's Gronk, I'm going to bet on the kick. I'm going for you, man. I know you're going to make it. And uh, what was really cool was that I was, you know, I was doing the Fox analyst stuff 
at, at the game in Philadelphia last week at the NFC Championship game. And I'm sitting there. We're on the sidelines, obviously, because the, the studio, the outside studio is right there uh, next to the San Francisco 49ers sideline. And, uh, and I'm just sitting there because we're about to go on air at halftime. So I'm standing there. And Robbie Gold is kicking into the net. So I'm looking uh-huh. at him. I'm looking at his form. I'm studying him. I'm seeing how he's kicking the ball, his rep, uh, the amount of reps he's doing, all that good stuff. Just seeing his follow through, you know, if his toes pointed or not, where he's kicking it on his foot, all the good stuff. So I watch him kick like five in a row. And then he starts staring at me a little bit, too. And we're like, we're staring at each other. And like... I, like, I don't know what he's thinking, but in my head, I'm thinking, like, yeah, I'm staring you down. I'm watching you right now, man. I'm studying you, Robbie Gold. You're one of the greatest kickers of all time. You've been <laughs> in the league for how many years? So then all of a sudden, he comes up to me, and he goes, you going to make that kick? And I lost my mind. I'm like, Robbie Gold, one of the greatest kickers in the NFL history, is coming up to me asking me if I'm going to make the kick. And I just like, oh, it was mind-blowing. I was like, you know something, Robbie? Robbie Gold, that's why I'm staring at you. I am studying you right now. <laughs> so it was just an instant classic. And obviously I told him, I go, of course I'm going to make it. I'm, I'm getting pointers from you right now. And my motivation to make this kick is for America. No one's that's doubting right. me, so I can't get that motivation. No one is talking garbage. But the motivation where I'm pulling from is that it's for everyone in America. Let's go. It's I got to make millions. it for America. <laughs> millions and millions in bonus bets over at FanDuel. I don't know what's funny. Are you getting so juiced by Robbie Gold and him telling you that? Or the fact that I'm guessing it's the first time you've ever looked at a kicker that carefully. You worked with Gostkowski for like <laughs> forever, but this is the first time that you really focused on what they're doing, and I think that's so funny. <laughs> Yeah, so like, I mean, Gus, Guskowski was an absolutely be- uh, an Amazing. absolute beast as well. And we were Polish power. He's Polish, I'm Polish. We both have ski at the end of our name. People got us confused all the time. Um, I love Steven. He was a great guy. He, he, I loved him in the locker room. We always had many jokes. But I never actually studied him before. I mean, I would watch him kick, and I'd be like, that's impressive. You just kicked it that far, and you're that accurate. But I actually never sat down and watched him kick it like eight times in a row and study exactly where he's hitting the ball, how he's placing it, all that good stuff. But I was doing that with Robbie Gold. That was my first time uh, in history ever just sitting there, just, you know, reading a kicker up and down. Just It's just incredible just how calm and cool they are. They just go up and they just yeah. kick that ball like it's normal, and it just flies like 80 yards in the air. And it's just like, wow, it's impressive. It's definitely an art. It's no doubt. It's an art Drunk. for sure. Gronk studying the art of kicking. Here's what I heard. America, this is for you. Go to FanDuel. If you're not signed up yet, perfect time to do it. There's millions coming your way in bonus bets when Gronk hits it through the uprights. And what I just heard is that, Gronk, you are taking this so damn seriously. You are in it. You are studying. You are juiced about this. Go get your rest. We appreciate you. We appreciate the nostalgia with Tom Brady, two of the greatest to ever do it. And I know that sometimes it probably gets boring to talk about, or not, but like it's greatness, right? So we have to sell celebrate it and recognize it when we have it. And uh, and I appreciate that you recognize that. Thank you. Yes, definitely. It is greatness. And uh, yes, greatness comes with a lot of attention. So uh, Tom, if you just weren't so great, man, you wouldn't be getting so much attention. So just take it, you know, all as a positive, which it all is. And you deserve, you know, every bit of recognition, uh, recognition, Tom, because what you did was just inspiring just for the youth, uh, for your teammates, for your coaches, for your friends, and for your family. So thank you for everything, Tom. Uh, You're a great teammate on and off the field. I love you, buddy. And, uh, you know, you're just going to have success from from here on out as well. Beautifully said. Go to Dick's Sporting Goods and grab your Brady gear. Everybody, go watch 80 for Brady. Cracking up. Loved it. Cameo from Gronk. Other cameos you need to check out. 80 for Brady. Check it out. Gronk will see you in Arizona with the kick of destiny. Good luck. All right, take care. I'll see you there. This game is over. You can't doubt the Chiefs. You can dislike the Chiefs. You can disrespect the Chiefs. You're going to have to deal with the Chiefs as the AFC champions. And for the third time in four years, the Lamar Hunt Trophy is back in Kansas City where it belongs. 
Are we in the midst of a dynasty? And just think about that, the Lamar Hunt Trophy, Clark Hunt there raising it, his entire family. Congratulations to them on another trip to the Super Bowl. And our next guest played right tackle for nine seasons in the NFL, five of those in Kansas City. He was a four-time All-Pro, becoming a Super Bowl champion. Gronk really wanted an intro, so here it goes. Mitchell Schwartz. All right, look at that. I, I, that's the best intro I've ever gotten, so well done. Uh, Super Bowl champion, Mitchell Schwartz, thank you for taking the time. You're literally the perfect person to talk to because your offensive line, it's all lazy. It's a good offensive line. It's not great. They switched the offensive line. I don't know. Nobody knows what they're looking at. You do. So that's very exciting. I will ask, though, first, last time I saw you, you are with your lovely wife, Brooke, and she revealed that her ick was the lazy boy, that you're on that recliner, Mitchell, all the time. So, um Will, will you give her a week of not being on the recliner, or are you such a sick pup about football that you're watching that Pro Bowl this weekend? Oh, no, absolutely not. We're, uh, we're not <laughs> even going to be here. We're going to go and uh, hang out with some friends and do some other stuff. It's not even a Pro Bowl, right? You can't even call it a Pro Bowl anymore. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. You're <laughs> in that all pro level and you've been you were you know, you were too busy in the playoffs and Super Bowls to even know what was going on half the time. So I don't I actually I don't quite know, but I'm liking that you're doing that because uh, a Brooks a, Brooks, you know, she's a firecracker. So you gotta you gotta she do is. what she wants one weekend before the Super Bowl. Where will you watch the Super Bowl? I'm actually gonna be at my parents' house and watching with them, which is I don't know that I've ever watched with them at their house because we always used to go to one of their friends' house for a Super Bowl party. And this is one of the first years they're just staying at home and watching it themselves. And we're going to be in town. So it, it should be a lot of fun to, you know, watch this particular Super Bowl with them as well. Yeah. So let's, t and hopefully they have a lazy boy for you. So it's, you know, the third one in four years for your Chiefs. You were on the 2019 championship team. So let's get into this. Uh, you know, and the 2020 team that lost to Brady and those Buccaneers in his last Super Bowl win before retiring. How would you rank those Chiefs teams against this current one? That's a good question. It's it's an interesting comparison because I think the, the biggest thing I think of is the defense and the evolution of the defense. You know, that Super Bowl season, we got Tyron Matthew and he was the, the leader of the unit and he was the one that brought all the energy. And if anyone's watched those mic'd up moments, I mean, they can't even put 75% of what he says on the field in a mic'd up segment, but the 25% is still uh, pretty awesome. Mm. But obviously the Chiefs moved on from him and this whole secondary is young guys. And so it's their development. It's Chris Jones becoming a dominant force, one of, you know, probably best defensive player this side of Aaron Donald and even and that's become a conversation, which is kind of crazy to think about. And so it's it's their evolution. It's what Chris and, and those guys can do to wreck a game. Um, offensively, you know, I obviously you know Tyreek and, you know, the offense isn't quite as explosive. It's a bit different than it used to be. Teams are guarding it differently, um, but it's still just as effective. I mean, all the numbers, all the all the data show that the Chiefs still have the best offense. So you're, you're still combining the best offense in the league um, with a defense that understands how to get to the quarterback, understands how to make timely plays and has young guys that are growing into their roles as well. You were with, it's really well said, you were with Mahomes the first four years of his career, and he does so many crazy things. And even last week, he's out there on one leg, and he's he's down 90% of his receiving core, and he's still making it happen. In your eyes, as, a, as evolutionarily speaking, how has Mahomes grown over that time to become the quarterback he is on the field now and the leader? Oh, it's like exponentially better, and... You know, you brought up, obviously, we lost to Brady, but the thing with the older quarterbacks, once they get into their 30s and with Tom into his 40s, is the knowledge just keeps increasing. You know, your body can start to, you know, degrade a little bit and maybe you can't move as quick. Maybe you can't throw quite as far with enough velocity, but the experience keeps evolving. And Pat's still 27, so he's just entering the prime years, that, you know, 28 to 32 region where he's going to be at his physical peak. And now he's got five or six years of experience banked in his brain. And so he he's only improved since his first year i mean the first year he had the, the gaudy stats it was 5,000 yards it was 50 touchdowns it was um you know one snap away from being in the the super bowl getting to that afc championship game at home against new england and he's just improved since then and the stats might not bear that out but when you watch him mm -hmm. kind of snap in snap out and especially last year i mean contrasting with the second half of the Cincy game last year you know being okay doing all the little things you know throwing to the running back that check down to pacheco comes to mind where pacheco you know breaks five tackles and gets the first down like those little plays those add up and those are the things that he keeps doing better and better 
It's so true. I mean, and that Bengals run defense had them pretty much. You know, I, of course, I'm a Bengals supporter. I would have liked to see them go to the Super Bowl, but I also like watching greatness. And I think that we look at Mahomes and all these crazy things he does, they get lost in the shuffle because we're just used to them at a certain point. So it's nice to see him get the biggest stage again and hopefully get, you know, himself a second Super Bowl to sort of solidify what's going on there and confirm all these things that we think about him as this magical player and generational player. He's so special. And... Am I worried about the Chiefs' offensive line? Because I'm watching this game, Mitchell, and all I'm saying is the man is limping. He's on one ankle, and you Bengals pass rush, you can't get to him? Like, you can't generate pressure? You can't, like, get your hands on him, you win the game. It couldn't happen. So how worried should I be against an Eagles defensive line that's got some waves, they've got some power? What do you think? That is going to be one of the key matchups. And I, I think if you look on paper, you'd say the Eagles D line probably has a bit of an advantage. You know, the strength of the Chiefs is the interior three and the Eagles have some really good players. And as much as, you know, we talk about the Hassan Reddick plays from last week, I mean, Oof. Hargrave, Fletcher Cox, Sue, Joseph, those guys were destroying the interior of the offensive line and they were getting a ton of pressure themselves. And so it's it's strength on strength there. And then when you do look at the edge rushers, I mean, you got Reddick, you got Brandon Graham, you got Sweat, you know, Quinn might be available might not be I mean those guys are really good players as, as well and you'd probably lean uh, towards the Eagles and so from the Chiefs perspective you know how much scheme help do you uh, give to the tackles are you taking away from other areas of the offense um, to do that you know are those guys going to step up and just win their one-on-ones when they need to uh, but on paper yeah you'd, you'd give it to Philly and it's We've seen it over the past few years, teams that are tooling up to try to stop the Chiefs. What do they do? They focus on the front four. And that goes back to that Tampa Super Bowl where, you know, we had a bunch of guys injured, myself included. But you saw the the key mm. to get to Pat is being able to rush with those four guys, throwing a timely blitz here and there. But the front four needs to do their work and to get there. And Philly has shown they're able to do that at a crazy, crazy rate this year. So that's going to be a fun matchup. It's so true. And then the op, I mean, you got two banged up quarterbacks and you've got this trench situation. We flip it around and you look at Chris Jones, who's playing out of his actual mind. I'm sure you're glad you're not playing anymore because if you're on a team up against him or even up against him in practice, like that just would not be fun. I'd, I'd be like, nope, I'm going to go <laughs> get some coffee and not want to do this. But he's got this crazy offensive line with the Eagles to contend with that you must, even though I'm sure you're pulling for the Chiefs, like, as an offensive lineman, marvel at that a little bit, right? It's so stout. And then you got a guy like Lane Johnson, and he's got, you know, his in-betweenies are torn off, and he's doing this, and he's trying to, you know, play through this injury, as I like to say. How? What makes him so special? Well, Lane in particular, I mean, he's always had, like, world-class athleticism and what he can do just – in terms of his body, like I can't do that. I mean, he ran some crazy 40 time in the four seconds at the combine. You know, he's like a super lean 305, 310, just all muscle. His agility is awesome. His strength is awesome. I mean, you probably wouldn't tell guys to use his technique because his technique involves kind of absorbing some of the rush. And then he calls it the double under. You get both hands underneath the defender and lift. But to do that, you have to basically be able to eat the initial pass rush, and he's strong enough to do that, and then he gets his leverage. So it's not something you'd coach to a guy who's traditionally 305, 310. You'd coach that to, you know, Andrew Whitworth or some of the old-school Bengals offensive linemen who are 340, 350, and Lane can do it at 305. So it, he's just nuts, and then obviously his ability to fight through the injury. But as you mentioned, the, the Chris Jones matchup against the interior of the Phillies O-line, that one is going to be the matchup because – this Chiefs defense, it goes basically as Chris Jones goes. And if Chris isn't, yeah. you know, able to have the same uh, effect because the O-line is doing a good job, Spags has to start dialing up blitzes, then it becomes a bit of uh, a risky proposition when you're blitzing as much. So I think for Philly's O-line, you know, I, I don't think as good as they are, you can say, all right, we just we trust our guards to win one on ones with Chris. Like he's so good that you want to give him extra attention, regardless of how good your guards are. The thing that Chris does and the thing that we saw, especially last week, is he destroys the second guy in the block, whether he kind of cuts hmm. him off because he beats the guy so quickly outside that the center can't even get there, or he beats the guard so quickly across the face because the guard's afraid of getting beat outside that the center like doesn't have time to get there. And then Chris is already in motion and he's so strong that he just bowling balls <laughs> off people. Um, so how Philly can kind of get those double team fits, whether they work in sync or whether it's kind of one versus one and then a second one-on-one, -on -one, uh, I think that's going to be the biggest thing for their line and how to handle him. It's so true, and just dare Jalen to throw. His shoulder did not look good. They ran 
148 yards on the ground, four rushing touchdowns. Stop the run. Don't let them run. And make Jalen Hurts, with a bad shoulder, throw it in the face of 95. That's what That would be my goal uh, if I was uh, Spags trying to do this. And Spags has, listen, these big moments, Spags dials it up. Like, he... It's always so impressive what they are able to do, even with defenses that I have slept on in big moments on the Chiefs. Your Super Bowl run, huge plays, and uh, and he's just he's not afraid. He doesn't he has he doesn't care at all, which is amazing. Okay, I want your Super Bowl pick. I have a feeling I know who you're going to pick, but I also want quickly the advice you would give objectively to any player that's playing in Super Bowl Fifty Seven on how to handle. The Super Bowl. Think back to what that week was like. Think back to that game, halftime, whatever. Like, what's the one thing of advice you'd give to any of these guys? I'll give two smaller pieces of advice. The first piece is you know who's coming to the game. You know which friends and family are coming. You can't see everybody and don't try to see everybody. Um, You know, this is your week to play in the Super Bowl. And so you need to prioritize getting prepared for the game, being mentally fresh, being ready. And so, you know, see the important people in your life, schedule, you know, a couple hours at a time to see them, but make sure you get your rest, make sure you're um, not overextended trying to see everybody who's coming to the game. And then the actual preparation you know, don't get bored. Um, we were lucky enough to have Stefan Wisniewski, who had played on the Philly Super Bowl. He was our left guard during our Super Bowl run, and he was able to give us to give us great advice, which is, don't get bored because you're going through the same installation, the same plays that you're yeah. doing this week. You know, this isn't a normal bye week. This isn't an Andy Reid. See you next week. Like those guys are practicing this week. They're getting installs, and so it gets really monotonous, especially as an offensive lineman. When back then we were watching San Fran's off uh, defensive line just destroy people play after play. Now they're going to be watching Philly's yes. D line destroy people play after play. So you can't get bored with that. You have to stay locked in, and you have to keep things as fresh as possible. And to to the pick, I mean. If you look at it on paper, and we've seen this because, you know, the the line has gone towards Philly. That was the initial line. I think Philly has the advantage on paper. You look at offensive and defensive lines, I think they have the advantage in both trenches. Typically, games are won and lost in the trenches, especially in these biggest moments against uh, the best teams. But the heart says it's Patrick Mahomes, you know, since he probably had the paper advantage last week as well. And there's just something special about Pat and when he feels challenged. And this just... You know, I feel like last game was the Jordan flu game, and it, it seems like, you know, Jordan wouldn't lose the next game after the flu game either. So I think uh, Kansas City is able to pull it out, and I, I really think it could be a high-scoring game. You know, I think some of the data shows that Philly's defense isn't quite as good against the top-tier teams they play offensively, and so I think yeah. there there is some hay to be made there. And from Philly's offensive perspective, we just talked about the O-line. I think they do have the advantage, and I think they can, you know, slow up Chris and Spags just a little bit. So I could see something, you know, 34-28, uh, something like that, Ooh. where it's a pretty high-scoring game. It's a lot of fun. It's also, I mean, it's two teams. I don't think they're going to be afraid of the moment. So a lot of the times we see, you know, the first quarter is 3 nothing, and people are a little tentative. They work their way into it. Um, I think these teams are going to come out firing. Uh, love that. High scoring game projected by Mitchell Schwartz, who's following his heart, not his knowledge when it comes to the trenches. I can't blame you. I mean, I can't blame you at all. We'll see how it works out. Uh, I mean, and then they have to deal with these idiots like me asking them about what their favorite Rihanna song is. So stay focused and don't get bored, players. We'll be back. Thank you, Mitchell Schwartz. Either the Chiefs or the Eagles are hoisting that Lombardi in like 10 days. Unbelievable. Let's welcome back our friend who thankfully did not cause a firestorm on Twitter this weekend, at least as far as I know. Super Bowl champion, friend of the show, Eric Weddle. Hey, Shoot, hey. I love I love stirring the pot. So, I mean, does it <laughs> does it hurt? Okay, does it hurt seeing those highlights, knowing your team's not gonna be there? Is it is it hey. tell me tell me how you're feeling right now? I'm tell seeing, me the frustration, the anger. Oh, no. The, just oh, no. tell me. Get, let it out. I know you want to let it out. A lot of people want to. Eric. They just can't. To me, this is your moment to tell Eric, me how you I feel wish, so we can move forward. I wish that you were on Monday show. And now that I know you wanted to, to play this role, I wish you were. There. I think Monday was the day <laughs> for frustration. <laughs> Monday was the day, and then Tuesday is like, all right, let's move on. And, like, I don't like wallowing in any feeling. So I moved on pretty quick. 
Like I don't, that's, I don't that's a good have a breakup to have in life. Than, yeah. So, so I feel, I feel okay about the Bengals. I don't think that they played as well as the Chiefs did. Mahomes was brilliant. He kept coming. Mahomes had a brilliant performance out there on one leg, throwing to Marquez Valdez Scantling, who had like a game of his life. So uh, they couldn't get to Mahomes, which was crazy. Given the circumstances, like how could you not? What he can't even run, bring him down and stop him. So the Chiefs deserve to go, and they maybe they deserve to win. So we'll get to the game in a little bit. But we've got NFL news. A friend of yours at the top of the news cycle. Let's take a look. Thoughts on Brady? Yeah, it's uh, what can you say? The the guy is a legend and the best to do it to do it in big games and to lead and do everything right. Like you know, to to you know, it takes a lot to to get to that level. And I'm not near what he played at, but. I know a lot of the time and sacrifice that goes into it and just tip my hat to, to the goat. And uh, I hope for the next step in his life that it's even better than the first. Cause I know it's, that's the way it is for me. And to hear stories of other guys when they retire, that they're happy and healthy and living their best life. I, I hope that for Tom, as he, as he moves forward. Uh, are, are you going to, Call him up and say, "Hey, we've got a quarterback coach gig for you at at Rancho." Or <laughs> no, no, I highly doubt if I shot him a text, he'd he'd hit me back because he's a he's a busy individual. But uh, he's got much uh, bigger things on on his plate than than coming and being assistant on my staff. I would offer him the OC job if that's more enticing, but. Uh, you know, that's, that's really all I can offer. I can't really pay him much other than maybe a, a $1,200 stipend for, for the entire season. So that's all I can really yeah. do for him. I don't know. I mean, if he was, yeah, there's a joke in there about if he was still married to Giselle, he could take a pay cut and do it, but I don't know oh, what the circumstances oh, are gosh. anymore. So we'll move on <laughs> to Sean Payton. No, it's all, it's all fine. Sean no, Payton, uh, speaking of Broncos and, you know, your OC and quarterback needs, let's talk about the NFL Broncos. You get Sean yeah. Payton, Russell Wilson, they're pairing up. What are your initial thoughts there? Uh, and is there a coach that you think Sean needs to grab and get on his staff? Gosh, uh, if, if Coach Evero doesn't get a head job, I would immediately rehire him as a defense coordinator, the job he did with that defense. But it'll be interesting. Uh to bring Coach Payton in at this point in his career and in Russell's career, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. Uh, you know he's going to put in the work and the time. With I'm talking as Russell. Uh, that That's not something that he lacks by any means. So he's going to give it his all. I just don't know uh, if he can – fit in that system, the timing, the accuracy, getting the ball out, yeah. hard play actions. Like Russell's a kind of a run around, make things happen. And and that that's what he brought to the table. So it'll be interesting. I mean, I, I think it's going to be better. It has to be uh, for them to make this hire and, and fork out all that money and draft big. So <clears throat> Sean Payton's got a lot of work to do, but I, I'm sure he's up for the task and he sure played his cards right. I mean, that's crazy. You could just – you don't want to coach anymore and don't like the situation. You just hold out for a year and then boom, you're back in again, paid buco bucks. Like that's, that's kind of wild to me. Not everyone can do it, but you know, retiring isn't a thing anymore. Gronk was just on my show. He retired. I'm retired. Came back. You came. You know, people true. just, it's okay to take a little break. I think you just don't say you're retiring. Just say, I'm going to take five. Yeah. I don't know what my plans are. And then come back and we'll see. I mean, Sean Payne, I, I don't know so. if that's where he, wanted to go, but I, I don't know how, if, I don't know how he feels about it, but I know that I'm sure he's scrambling to get the guys that he wants on that yeah. staff to make a difference. All right, let's talk Super Bowl 57. I need your pick, but I also need your safety goggles on the matchup, and I hope we're doing something with the trenches. Yeah, uh, I think the huge focus is going to be the Kansas City O-line versus the Philadelphia front. I mean, it's by far the best front in the entire league, 78 sacks, just insane and couple that with the number one pass defense. So 
they're going to have to manufacture some run and some some first down positive yards. But if they get in a third and long situation throughout this game where it's it's continuing to put them behind the eight ball, I don't know. I think the Eagles have advantage. I need a top to bottom roster. The Eagles are tough. Got some talented guys. So I think that's a huge emphasis of this game. Can they protect Mahomes? Are they going to affect the game, which I think they will. And, you know, that's going to be my pick for this Super Bowl is the Eagles taking it away. The Eagles to win Super Bowl 57. You sound really excited about that, Eric. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I picked Frisco Chiefs. And obviously, I, I didn't think the Frisco was going to win last week, even with Purdy. Eagles was too good. And, you know, Chiefs, Chiefs Bengals was a, was a great game. Back and forth. Bottom line is for the Bengals, they had their chances. They didn't get it done. And I love the fact that the players said that and didn't blame anything else or blame the coaches or blame the refs. Listen, you either get it done or you don't. And they'll they'll get better from it. And they're going to be in that moment many, many, many times in the, on the horizon for Burrow and company. We love it. We appreciate you, Eric Weddle. We will talk to you soon. Uh, you you know, got you, you got to shoot your shot. You got to send Brady that text and just say, listen, got some opportunities here for you. Let's do it. All right. From Weddle to Shams, from NFL to NBA, question mark. You know I don't know basketball, but Shams is going to fill you in on trade deadline. Is that what's happening? Ugh. Oh, no. We're, we're not this. Is this actual happening or is this cheesiness? I think our next guest thinks that we're going to talk basketball, but I don't really think we're going to talk any basketball. Senior lead NBA insider for the Athletic and Stadium, a FanDuel family member uh, who hosts Run It, Run it Back, our very own Riz God, Shams is here. Hey, Shams. I can't hear her. Oh, no, we have audio issues. We can't hear Shams. What's going on? <laughs> What's good? Hold on. They're trying to figure it out. Shams, we have a poor connection. All right, can you hear me? I can't hear you. I'm sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure you're saying amazing things about me. Uh, hopefully they can hear me. Okay, it was Women in Sports Day yesterday. I just want to say a uh, couple things. One, okay. we're the same age. We're both from Chicago. We're both Aries. You're a Missouri grad. That was in my top three. I just didn't go to Missouri. Uh, your parents were immigrants. My parents were immigrants. I just wanted to say, you get your flowers, just everything you built. I have a lot of respect. I know yesterday was Women in Sports uh, Day, so congrats to everything you've done. Shams. And keep building. Shams, Shams, what is, is this like a prank? I'm waiting for like the, the other shoe to drop. That is the sweetest no, thing uh, that I've ever heard. Thank you so much. It was much. a big right day yesterday. You, like, I just want to make sure you got your love. That's all. I, I didn't get enough love, but now I did. Now I feel very <laughs> loved. And you are just, you are amazing. I'm glad. I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, thankfully, thankfully. Shams, you were the best. We love Run It Back. You and Chandler Parsons are absolutely hilarious. And I'm gonna see you on Friday so we get to hang out in Arizona. FanDuel has this crazy party going on on Friday night where I believe you're going up against another woman in sports who I, I looked up to a, a ton in Michelle Beadle. How is that gonna go down and are you nervous? I'm definitely nervous. I mean, this is, this is you know, we can keep secrets on the show, you know, you, Marissa, Conrad, Richard. So this is, I know this show's not gonna get many views. You know, me and you, we don't get that many views. So I'll just say this on the show. I've never played beer pong. Uh, you, you guys actually broke the news to me that I'm playing Michelle or I'm matched up against Michelle. So I think. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's my first experience. I'm a quick learner. I'm sure I'll, I'll win the whole thing, whoever I'm playing. You're I'll playing. do my, my thing, what I always do. Shams, you're playing beer pong against her. Now, if you had to pick an NBA player to play beer pong with as a partner, who would you pick? Well, I'm going to go Chandler Parsons. He's not in the NBA now, but I'm going with Chandler Parsons. That's my guy. Uh, he's gotten himself in a little bit of hot waters the last month or so. He's <laughs> gone at Utah uh, Watanabe uh, in Brooklyn. He's a Japanese player. Uh, he's gone at uh, LeBron James with, you know, with the goat comment. He's talked about his dog, his, his French bulldog. So he's hit all demographics, but that's why we love Chandler. He brings his great takes to run it back, and, and he says what's on his mind, and that's why we love Chandler. I've never met Chandler, and you know I don't even follow the NBA, but if I'm seeing 
The stuff that Chandler Parsons is saying about other people, you know it's broken through. Like, it, it, it's amazing. Yeah. And so everybody has to watch Run It Back. And also, I want to talk about this because the NBA tra trade deadline is coming. And you have a trade deadline show for Stadium. I want to give this love here. It's Inside the Association Trade Deadline Special. It's presented by FanDuel, which we love. And it's live exclusively on Stadium and Twitter, 2 to 2.30 Eastern, February 9th. This was a big success last year. What do I need to know? Yeah, we got a million viewers last year. This year, we're going to bring it back. Pat Garrity, who was an assistant GM with the Pistons. He also played 10 years in the NBA. Uh, Quinn Richardson, they'll be our guest analyst, uh, and they'll have me. So we'll, we'll be talking about all the news, analyzing all the news. I can't wait for it. And also, next week on Run It Back, three days of shows. We'll see if some trades break during the shows. We had a trade, uh, actually an injury break last week. So I think you never know what can happen in the NBA. I, I love that. Quinton Richardson, Marquette player? Is that true? Uh, I think DePaul. I think, DePaul. I, I, I think DePaul. Shit. You got to be up on your Chicago knowledge. You know, Kay, I saw you said uh, LA K or New York K a few weeks ago. We want Chicago yeah. K. Like, you got to pull back into your roots here. Come on. You need it. I don't know Chicago well enough. When I'm in Chicago, you and I have to hang out, and then everyone can talk about it <laughs> on NBA Twitter. Okay, we have like a minute left. I'm going to get some, uh, some, you know, listen, you're playing ping pong, so I'm going to serve you some things, and you got to give me rapid-fire answers. I believe in you, Shamsi. We can get through this. Biggest candidate to get traded, go. I'm going to go Pascal Siakam or OG Ananubi in Toronto. Definitely the biggest names. John Collins and Jay Crowder uh, are also very, very uh, big trade candidates as well. I've never heard of any of them. Which team will be the most aggressive at the deadline? Let's go. Milwaukee, Phoenix, the Clippers, the Lakers. Uh, I, th I, think, I think that's it. I think I'm hitting all of them. Phoenix. Better seen NBA All-Star Weekend or the Super Bowl? I've never been to the Super Bowl, so I can't comment on that. So I'm going to go with uh, NBA All-Star Weekend until I'm proven otherwise. I can't hear you. They, they, they love to talk instead of letting me talk to you, Shams. What a mess. I love you. <laughs> talk to you. I'll see you next week.